Hello everybody, I am incredibly excited today to give you the first demonstration of quite a sophisticated AI running on blockchain. That blockchain of course is the internet computer, the only blockchain in the world today that can run compute at scale. There's a lot of talk about you know blockchains for AI, tokens for AI and things like that. This is the real deal. This is AI running on blockchain. So today I'm going to demonstrate image classification, which involves a neural network running inside a small contract. In fact, that neural network has been compiled to WebAssembly, um, which is what you know runs on the internet computer. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Web3 has spent years promising decentralization, but the truth is that most of the tools people rely on are still tied to the same fragile centralized systems they're supposed to replace. Every major breach, outage, and exploit reminds us that the foundations of the internet are still built on trust instead of verifiable security. That gap has slowed down adoption, weakened user confidence, and held back the entire crypto ecosystem. But something is shifting. A new approach is proving that security doesn't have to be an afterthought, and it doesn't have to rely on third-party cloud providers. The internet computer is showing the world that Web3 can run end-to-end on-chain, with its data, logic, and services protected by cryptography instead of corporate servers. This isn't a small upgrade. It's a complete redesign of how the internet secures itself. If you want to understand why so many developers are moving to ICP, why enterprises are finally paying attention, and why this technology is being called the future of trustless computing, then keep watching. The next few minutes will change the way you see Web3 security forever. This video is created for educational and informational purposes only. It does not promote or endorse any financial product, investment, or cryptocurrency. All information presented here is based on publicly available sources and independent analysis. Viewers are encouraged to conduct their own research before making any financial or technological decisions. Web3 has reached a point where the promises and the reality often feel far apart. For years, the community imagined a decentralized digital world where users control their identity, their data, and their interactions without relying on centralized companies. The vision was powerful, a self-sovereign internet built on trust, transparency, and strong cryptography. But as the ecosystem grew, so did the problems. Major projects suffered from smart contract vulnerabilities, bridge exploits, server breaches, compromised admin keys, database leaks, and front-end manipulation. Billions were lost to attacks that often hit not the blockchain itself, but the surrounding infrastructure. The truth is that most blockchains were never built to run entire applications. They were designed to settle transactions, not host full digital services. Developers filled the gaps with centralized cloud servers, external APIs, off-chain storage, makeshift bridges and systems that were stitched together piece by piece. This created an environment where the chain might be secure, but everything around it was fragile. Into this landscape steps the Internet computer, known as ICP, with an approach that changes the conversation. Instead of improving the old model, it replaces it with a completely new architecture designed for long-term security at every layer. What makes ICP different begins with the removal of centralized servers. In the traditional Web3 setup, developers deploy smart contracts on-chain but run the rest of the application off-chain. The database sits on AWS. The front end is hosted on a web server. The APIs run through a cloud gateway. The authentication relies on centrally stored credentials. Even when smart contracts are decentralized, the core of the project remains exposed to single points of failure. ICP eliminates this pattern by allowing the entire application to run inside canisters, which operate directly on the blockchain. Everything from business logic to storage to user interface lives within the chain itself. When a user interacts with an ICP app, there is no cloud server acting as a middle layer. Requests go straight to the nodes that host the canister. This redefines what decentralization means, because attackers can no longer target a single server or manipulate a database stored outside the chain. The attack surface shrinks dramatically. With no back-end infrastructure controlled by a developer, Web3 apps become much harder to compromise. A major part of this transformation comes from ICP's advanced cryptography. Chain key cryptography allows the entire network to function under a single public key. Behind that simple concept lies a complex and highly secure mechanism for generating signatures. 
Instead of storing or revealing a private key, the network performs distributed key generation and threshold cryptography. Nodes cooperate to produce signatures without any one node having enough information to reconstruct the key. The private key, therefore, never exists in one place, never travels across a network, and cannot be extracted by an attacker, even with deep system access. This changes the security model fundamentally. Traditional chains often rely on centralized signers, multisigs, or third-party custodians to handle external integrations. ICP can authenticate itself directly. It can sign Bitcoin transactions without bridges or wrapped tokens. It can send and verify messages across networks without intermediaries. This drastically reduces the risks that have plagued the industry. Many of the most catastrophic losses in crypto history came from bridge failures. ICP's architecture sidesteps the problem entirely. User security also improves because ICP does not require constant wallet signatures. Most blockchains force users to approve every action through their wallet, exposing them to fake dApps, phishing websites, malicious signature requests, and transaction manipulation. Every interaction is an opportunity for attackers to deceive the user. ICP reverses this model. Instead of users paying gas fees for each action, developers fund their canisters, allowing applications to run without requiring user signatures. This makes interactions seamless and removes the constant dependency on private keys. Users do not approve every move, and therefore, attackers cannot trick them into signing harmful transactions. This simple design choice eliminates many social engineering attacks that depend on confusing or misleading wallet prompts. The user experience becomes safer and more intuitive. Front-end security is another area where ICP changes the game. Many Web3 projects have suffered attacks where hackers replace the front-end with a malicious version. Because most interfaces are hosted off-chain, an attacker only needs access to a single server or content delivery system to swap the legitimate interface with a dangerous clone. Users see a familiar layout, but every interaction sends their private information to the attacker. ICP removes this threat by hosting front-ends directly on the blockchain. Browsers load the interface from the chain itself, not from a traditional server. This means the front end cannot be quietly modified, overwritten, or hijacked. The authenticity of the application becomes cryptographically tied to the chain. If the developer wants to update the interface, the new version must be deployed on-chain. This creates a transparent, tamper-proof delivery system that secures one of the most vulnerable areas in Web3. Data storage is another overlooked area where ICP provides a different approach. Conventional blockchains store only small amounts of data, usually limited to transaction logs. Everything else must be stored off-chain, often on cloud servers or IPFS gateways that are controlled by teams rather than decentralized networks. These off-chain systems become easy targets. ICP allows applications to store data directly inside canisters, from user records to application state to media files. This makes the blockchain itself a secure, self-contained host. Canisters maintain state, meaning they remember data between executions, allowing developers to build full-scale applications without bolting on centralized databases. The result is a tamper-proof storage layer with cryptographic guarantees. Attackers cannot delete, alter, or poison data because it never leaves the chain. One of the biggest weaknesses in Web3 has always been bridges. They are complicated systems that move assets between chains but often rely on centralized operators, multi-sig wallets, or vulnerable smart contracts. The history of crypto bridges is a long list of failures. ICP's interaction model avoids bridges entirely by communicating with other chains through chain key cryptography. It can hold and sign Bitcoin transactions without wrapping the asset. It can validate Ethereum messages without trusting third parties. This reduces risk dramatically. By eliminating bridges, ICP eliminates the single largest source of catastrophic hacks in the industry. The network's architecture adds another layer of protection. ICP operates through subnets, which are independent blockchains managed by sets of nodes. Each subnet hosts a group of canisters and operates under its own consensus. This creates natural isolation. If something goes wrong in one subnet, it does not automatically endanger the others. High-security applications can be placed on specialized subnets with strict governance and high reliability. Others can run on general subnets optimized for performance or cost. This modular design is similar to safety practices in engineering fields where isolating systems reduces the impact of failures. ICP's subnets can also scale horizontally by splitting or merging depending on demand. 
This means the network can grow without sacrificing security or performance. Identity remains one of the biggest challenges in digital systems. Passwords are the weakest link in cybersecurity. They can be leaked, stolen, guessed, or fished. ICP approaches identity with a system called Internet Identity. Instead of passwords, users authenticate using biometrics, hardware security keys, or secure device enclaves. The authentication is performed through cryptographic proofs created on the device itself. No passwords are stored, and no private information is transmitted. Internet identity removes entire categories of attacks, from credential stuffing to phishing to database breaches. It turns identity into a secure, cryptographic handshake that doesn't require users to remember anything. For Web3 applications, this means logins can be both decentralized and highly secure without exposing private keys. Governance is another area where insecurity can appear. Many blockchain projects claim decentralization, but depend heavily on creators who hold admin keys that can alter contracts, upgrade protocols, or change system behavior. These centralized access points become massive security liabilities. ICP offers a solution through the Service Nervous System Framework. This enables developers to convert their projects into fully decentralized DAOs with on-chain voting, automated upgrades, and community-controlled parameters. No single person or small group retains hidden authority. Upgrades require collective approval, and the governance logic itself is stored inside canisters. Once a project activates an SNS, it becomes tamper-proof by design, ensuring the long-term integrity of the system. Beyond applications and governance, ICP supports secure encrypted communication natively within the blockchain. Developers can build end-to-end -end encrypted messaging, privacy-focused platforms, and secure collaboration tools without relying on centralized servers to manage encryption keys. Since keys can be generated and managed through chain key cryptography, they aren't stored in predictable locations where attackers can target them. This creates new possibilities for industries where confidentiality is essential, such as finance, healthcare, corporate governance, or legal services. Very few blockchain networks provide encrypted communication built directly into their architecture. Another strength of the Internet computer is its ability to update securely. Traditional blockchains rely on manual coordination to deploy upgrades, often requiring community votes, scheduled hard forks, or emergency patches. These processes can be slow, contentious, or risky. ICP updates automatically through the network nervous system, which manages nodes, protocol parameters, and on-chain upgrades. When improvements or security patches are approved, the system applies them seamlessly across the network. There is no need to fork the chain, no need for manual interventions, and no downtime. This ensures the blockchain stays current with evolving security standards without creating fragmentation. A long-term view of security includes preparing for technologies that don't yet exist but could pose future threats. Quantum computing is one such risk. Many blockchains rely on cryptographic algorithms that quantum computers may eventually break. ICP's chain key architecture is designed to support cryptographic upgrades that can be adopted without disrupting applications, wallets, or canister interactions. The network can transition toward quantum-resistant algorithms when the time comes, keeping the system secure for decades. Future-proofing is an essential part of a modern security architecture, and ICP incorporates this at the protocol level. What emerges from all these innovations is a fundamentally different security model. Traditional blockchains secure the base layer, but leave most of the application infrastructure exposed to centralized systems and off-chain dependencies. ICP extends security across the entire stack. The front end is secure, the storage is secure, the execution environment is secure, the identity system is secure, the multi-chain connections are secure, the governance is secure, the upgrade path is secure. This creates a coherent environment where decentralization and security reinforce each other rather than conflicting. This approach turns Web3 into something closer to a secure global computer rather than a set of isolated ledgers. The architecture avoids the patchwork approach that has led to so many failures in the crypto space. Instead of relying on third-party systems, improvised bridges, and centralized servers, ICP integrates everything into a unified framework built on cryptography and decentralization. It treats security as a foundation, not a feature. By addressing vulnerabilities at the architectural level, ICP avoids the need for constant patches and emergency fixes. As Web3 continues to evolve, security will define which networks survive long-term. A decentralized future cannot be built on systems vulnerable to predictable attacks. 
The next generation of digital services needs a foundation that protects users, developers, and data at every level. ICP provides that foundation. It introduces a model where attacks become harder not because the system adds complexity, but because it removes the weak points entirely. It shifts Web3 away from fragile infrastructure toward a secure, scalable, user-owned internet. This is how ICP redefines Web3 security. By eliminating servers, protecting identities, removing bridges, securing front ends, upgrading automatically, isolating networks, encrypting communication, and using advanced cryptography, it creates a blueprint for the future of decentralized systems. It offers a path where security is not something developers struggle to add later, but something built into the heart of the network. If Web3 is going to reach its intended vision, models like ICP will lead the way. All right, if you learned something new or enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss future updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.